Let R be a commutative ring with one, and the claim is that R is a field if and only if R has no proper non-zero ideals. Let's go ahead and do this proof, so proof. Let's start by proving that uh, if R is a field, then R has no proper non-zero ideals. So suppose R is a field. And let's go ahead and try this by contradiction. Um, so suppose to the contrary, that I is a proper non-zero ideal. Well, if it's a proper ideal and it's not zero, then that means that I is not equal to the entire ring. And it also means that I is not equal to the ideal containing zero and zero alone, the ideal generated by zero. So this means there exists an element which we'll call, say, A in I, such that A is not equal to zero. All right, it's a non-zero ideal. And since R is a field, since R is a field, A inverse exists. Right? That's what it means to be a field. Every non-zero element is a unit. In other words, every non-zero element has an inverse. And so then what we can do is we can write one in a clever way. One can be written as the inverse of A times A. This is an element in our ring or in our field R. And this is A. So therefore, because I is an ideal, the product also lives in I. So I contains 1. So for all R and R, we can write R equals R times 1. This is an element in R. This is an element in I. And so because I is an ideal again, the product is in I. So every single R in capital R is also in capital I. So I must be the whole ring. And that's a contradiction. So that takes care of the first direction. So now we'll prove the other direction. Let me use a different color. So here's my funny arrow. So we'll start by supposing R has no proper non-zero ideals. So suppose R has no proper non-zero ideals. And the claim is that R is a field. So claim R is a field. So to show it's a field, we have to show that every non-zero element is a unit. So take any A and R, A not equal to 0. And we're going to look at the following set. So set, let's call it um, I. Set I equal to the set of R, A, R, and R. In other words, this is the ideal generated by A. Now, I just said it was an ideal, but we're going to go ahead and prove it uh, in this problem. So claim I is an ideal. So to show it's an ideal, use a different color, what do we need to show? We need to show two things. We need to show that one, for all A, B, and I, we have A minus B also in I. And two, we need to show that for all R and R, for all A and I, we have RA also in I. 
So those are the two things uh, we are going to prove here. Probably shouldn't have used A in this definition here. It's kind of sloppy because we have an A here as well. Okay, so take any x, y, and i. So then x can be written as r1a and y can be written as r2a for some r1 and r2 in capital R. And now we'll start by looking at this difference here, a minus b, so in our case, x minus y. So then, x minus y, well, x is r1a, so this is r1a, minus, and y is r2a, so this is r2a. And this can be written as r1 minus r2 times a. And this is an i. And the reason is r1 is an r. r2 is an r. So r1 minus r2 must also be an r because r is an additive group under addition. It's a ring. So therefore, this is an r. And this is a. And so by definition of i, uh, this element is an i. So that takes care of the first part. For the next part, so then, for all r in r, we'll look at rx. Well, rx is r, r1a. And this is, using associativity, r, r1, parentheses, a. Both of these guys are an r. r is a ring. It's closed under multiplication. So the product is an r. And this is a. So by definition of i again, simply by the definition, this is also an i. So we showed that rx is an i. So this shows that i is an ideal. So this shows, this shows i is an ideal. Okay, so we've shown that i is an ideal. So because i is an ideal, or rather before that, note something. Note a can be written as 1 times a. So a is certainly an i. And so then we can do the following. 1 can be written as 1 times a. We know that 1 is an r. We know that a is an i. And we've shown that i is an ideal, right? So that this means that this product is an i. And this is because, just to be really clear, this is because 1 is an r, a is an i, and i is an ideal. That's the key step. And since 1 is an i, there exists some R and R such that one can be written as RA. So one is equal to RA. And so this shows that A is a unit. So this shows A is a unit. And so therefore R must be a field. Thus R is a field. So we did that in excruciating detail, but um, hopefully that helped.